Welcome to Pepha Church Dunholm. We are a Pentecostal and evangelistic church of like-minded believers of precious faith who are totally submitted to the Holy Spirit. We are mission-oriented, multicultural, and a multi-ethnic church. Pepha Church Dunholm is committed to know Christ and to make Him known. This we accomplish by touching hearts, empowering people so that they can be agents of transformation spiritually and economically. We welcome you to our three services in our virtual church. For the kids and those who are young at heart, we have Kingdom Kids starting at 9 a.m. all the way to 9.30 a.m. After that, we have our English service beginning at 9.45 a.m. all the way to 11 a.m. And last but not least, our Swahili service which begins at 11.15 a.m. all the way to 12.30 p.m. Please join us and let us be blessed while we are at the comfort of our home. Praise the Lord, our viewers from wherever you are. I want to take this opportunity to welcome you to our midweek service. This is Pepha Church Donom. I want to welcome you to this moment of praise and worship. Let's take time and pray, then we start in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for such a wonderful time in your presence. We pray that for everyone that is listening to us, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that even in noon time and in the evening, whoever listens to this, Lord, will be blessed. I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Can we give Jesus just a mighty hand clap even as we start this moment of praise in Jesus' name. Oh, 
Joseph Gikonyo, and by the grace of God, I serve in this church as a deacon. I'm so grateful to have this opportunity to come and speak to us. I want to appreciate uh, the leadership of our church, <coughs> led by our bishop, senior pastor, Bishop Paul, and our senior bishop, 
uh, Bishop Moffat Kiriaba and the board, we do not take it for granted that we have this opportunity. I am uh, a family man, or a wife, and uh, two children, and a grandson. So we will thank God for this far he has brought us. Today we want to look at uh, a topic that probably many of us have not been considering. And the message is titled, Meet the Condition, God Will Fulfill the Promise. I want to start by looking at what is a condition. So that when we are discussing the conditions that God has set for us, we are looking at something that we have fully understood. One of the dictionaries has described a condition as something that must exist before something else can happen. So for example, a certain condition must be met before aid will be provided. Another way of looking at a condition is to say something that you must agree to and that forms part of an official agreement. For example, I hereby agree to the terms and conditions of my engagement as stated above. We can still see another example uh, of what a condition is and we can see as an arrangement that must exist before something else can happen. For example, a strong social business base is, ne is a necessary condition for the economic future of the area. Praise the Lord. Now, we will also define a promise so that now we are able to connect the two. And a promise is a declaration that one will do or refrain from doing something that has been specified. A promise is a declaration that one will do or refrain from doing something specified. It is also a legally binding declaration that gives a person uh, to whom it is made a right to expect or to claim the performance or the forbearance of a specified act. So, having understood uh, what a condition and a promise is, now we want to put them together and just go through a few uh, points here that we are going to discuss. Before I go to the points, I want to submit to us that the Bible is uh, replete with promises uh, which are conditional. That is, there are so many conditional promises in the Bible. If we were to read them through, you probably have to read the whole Bible. And when you read right from the Old Testament to the New Testament, you will find these conditions all the way from Genesis. But why does God give us these conditional promises? Why can't he just give us promises that he will do this because we are his children? He's the one who made us. So why does he give us conditions? And I want us to reflect on uh, real life. In real life, there are so many conditions that we have to meet for us to be able to proceed with our day-to-day -day lives. For example, if you want to drive on the road, you have to keep a certain lane. Depending on your country, you may be required to keep left or you may be required to keep right. This is to maintain order in driving. So similarly, in the kingdom of God, there will be expectation that we have rules of engagement upon which uh, fulfillment of, of those who will lead us to a living uh, harmony within the kingdom. God has given us a freedom and an opportunity to choose how we want to relate with him. This means that God is not under any obligation to keep the promises he has made if we first do not meet the conditions that he has set. And it is true. The conditions as we have seen in the definition have to be met for the other part to be fulfilled. And so we are saying that uh, God is not oblig obligated in any way. He is not bound to fulfill a promise if we have not played our part. So the reason why we are saying that uh, these 
rules of engagement are important is because for this relationship to exist, it needs to be guided by those rules and, uh, and, and rules and guidelines that the Lord has set. And we are going to look at some of those in a short while. Now, meeting these conditions is a choice that we have to make. And as we know very well, choices have consequences. Picking up from my brother, Joshua Kiaka, who shared here in this uh, pulpit about choices having consequences. Yes, the choices will have consequences. And it is very clear, and as we'll see as we go along, that uh, actually what you choose or how you choose to relate with God will bring different repercussions. In the book of John, uh, chapter 1 and verse 12, the Bible says that, Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the, he gave the right to become children of God. This means that giving us a right to be called a child of God, or as we know in the current uh, days, being called a Christian, is subject to us receiving and believing in the name of Jesus. One as favor. So how do we receive and believe in him? The Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 10 and verse 9, that if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. My understanding of this is that uh, if we do not confess or if we do not believe, then we will not receive that salvation. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, allow me to look at uh, a few uh, conditions. Uh, we are going to just see some of these and how they relate to our day-to-day -day life. I'll start by looking at forgiveness of sins. Did God promise to forgive our sins? Yes, he did. Now, when we go back to the days of Noah, we see that the Lord had seen how great the wickedness of the human race had become. With every inclination of their thoughts and in their hearts being evil all the time. And this caused God to regret having ever created human beings. And his heart was deeply troubled. You can see that in Genesis chapter 6, verses 5 to 6. The Bible also says that in Romans chapter 3 and verse 23, that as Paul was writing to the Christians in Rome, and he stated that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But nonetheless, the Lord has given us promises of forgiveness upon meeting certain conditions. So let us look at one of the conditions that the Lord has given us, that once we meet, we are going to be forgiven. First John chapter 1 and verse 9. The Bible says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So here, for us to be forgiven our sins, for us to be purified from all unrighteousness, all we are required to do is to confess our sins. So, it is as simple as that. Just confess your sins. We have seen that every time man is inclined to do evil. And indeed, Paul says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So, if we do confess our sins every time, then God has promised to be able to forgive us of all those sins and to purify us from all our unrighteousness. And that is a promise he will keep if we do play our part. Second Chronicles 7 and verse 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven 
and I will forgive their sins, and I will heal their land. This is very interesting. We are going through interesting times this period as we are battling the pandemic, and we know that uh, many people have gone down to seek God. When you read the verse 13 of the, 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 the same chapter uh, from where I've just read, it begins to talk about when God brings locusts, brings famine, and other calamities. And, but goes on to say that if my people who are called by my name. So he's not addressing just everybody. He's addressing a specific people who have chosen to be called by, um, by his name. And these are the people we have looked at at the beginning. And we're saying those who have accepted the Lord as their savior and have confessed that Jesus is Lord. Praise the Lord. So during this pandemic, we have seen many people going to pray, and most of them are quoting this verse. But the question I am asking myself, and even as I'm asking you is, how many of them have met this condition? How many have humbled themselves? How many have prayed? How many have sought God's face? And how many have turned from their wicked ways? So that God will hear from heaven and then do forgive our sins and heal our land. I don't have the answer. That is a question you have an answer on your own part. The other person has an answer on their part. But the Lord has given us a very simple condition to meet that he is going to fulfill the promise that he has given. Praise the Lord. Number two. Getting a long and meaningful life on earth. You know, arising from the fall of man, death was announced and it became part of us. And the number of days that one now could live on earth have been shortened over a period of time. Currently, we talk about people living around 70 years as having a full, lived a full life. But when you compare with the days of the old, we see people like Medusela being recorded as having lived the longest at 969 years in Genesis chapter 5 and verse 27. These days were being shortened because of what we have seen earlier that men continued to sin, men continued to do evil, and God was getting constantly annoyed. And for this reason, he shortened the days. But as we go along, we realize that uh, he has promised that he's going to give us a long and meaningful life on meeting certain conditions. For example, when you look at uh, 1 Kings chapter 3 and verse 14, the Bible says, remember this is after Solomon had dedicated the temple and God had come through to him in a dream and I had asked him to you know, name what he would want him to do for him. And Solomon sought to be given understanding to be able to rule the people that uh, God had assigned him. And after he had sought wisdom, God was quite happy with that. And he gave him not only you know, um, the, the wisdom that he had sought, but also gave him riches and honor. And in this particular verse, verse 14, it says, And if you walk in obedience to me, and keep my decrees and commands as David your father did, I will give you a long life. Praise the Lord. So walking in obedience with God, keeping his decrees and commands will earn us a long life. Exodus 20, uh, verse 12, the famous commandment, honor your father and your mother so that you may live Long in the land that the Lord is, uh, your God is giving you. Simple. We have parents. We have also got children. Simple. Just obey. And I think this has been one of the challenges that we are facing today, where we have come up with a generation that seems not to understand the value of honoring parents. And therefore, 
they may be missing this blessing. But we want to thank God for this scripture that the Lord is giving us a chance to obey our parents so that we can have a long life. The same emphasis is given in the book of Ephesians, uh, chapter 6, verse 1 to 3. And if I can read, it says that the children obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you and you may enjoy long life on the earth. So for the young people who are here, or even the grown-ups whose parents are still alive, I am challenging you today to challenge God on this scripture. Just go obey your parents and see if God is not going to give you a long life. Praise the Lord. Number three, good health. God has promised to give us good health. Everybody desires to have a well-built body, you know. But more importantly, whether you have the figure that you want or not, whether you have the color that you want or not, one fundamental thing that we all crave for is to have good health so that we are able to do our business or the, do the business that the Lord has given us. So we cannot underestimate the value of good and more so robust health in our day-to-day -day lives. However, time and time again, we fall sick and we are unable to carry out uh, our activities normally. So this is the time we go to seek for treatment and we go to look for other things. Some will go and seek for treatment and perhaps they will not be able to get healed. Some even end up dying. The Lord has given us uh, conditional promises on good health, and I'm going to look at uh, like three of them uh, so that we can reinforce this message. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 12, the Bible says, if you pay attention to the laws and are careful to follow them, then, uh, then the Lord your God will keep his covenant of love with you and as he swore to your ancestors. And the Lord will keep you free from every disease. This is verse 15. The Lord will keep you free from every disease. He will not inf inflict on you the horrible diseases you knew in Egypt, but he will inflict them on all who hate you. Praise the Lord. This is a guarantee of good health. But the condition is that we have to pay attention to the laws and are careful to follow them so that the Lord will be able to keep uh, this covenant. Proverbs 3, uh, verse 7 and 8, the Bible says, Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring you, will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Simple. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Let the Lord be the one who, who, who is taking charge of, of it. Fear the Lord and shun evil. And then the Lord will feel his, fulfill his promise. Proverbs uh, 4 and verse 20 to 22. My son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear uh, to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. So young people who are here, you can see um, the simple conditions that the Lord has set. These are the words that are given by the teacher, the words that are given by your superiors. Bind them in your heart and the Lord is going to ensure that you have a good health for your whole body. Praise the Lord. Number four, prosperity. Now, this is an area that is very interesting. When you go through the world, like even now during this pandemic, 
the biggest issue that is causing many nations want to reopen and we also you know uh, in that space is that the economies have been impacted so the wealth of the nations have been affected the prosperity of the people have been depleted but how do we get this wealth now apostle paul when he wrote to timothy uh, in the book of uh, 1 Timothy 6 and, and verse 10, he warned that uh, the love for money is the root of all kinds of evil. And he went on to say that uh, some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many, many, many griefs. And it is true. You may be already uh, be knowing some people who are very faithful in church when they had nothing. You may be knowing some people who are very good to others when they were in their low moments. But one day the Lord blessed them. The Lord gave them prosperity and you do not find them anymore. When you happen to talk to them, they explain how busy they are sorting out this and sorting out the other. But my prayer is that in the process of doing all that, we do not get into a place where the money becomes the major attraction. Rather, we would want to have the Lord taking the center stage. There is nothing wrong in desiring to be prosperous. And everybody wants to be prosperous. Even God himself wants us to be proper, prosperous. In fact, for the kingdom of God to be expanded, we will need resources. We will need people to be prosperous. And it is our prayer that everybody will prosper in accordance to God's will. And there are certain conditions that God has set, which if we follow them carefully, we are going to be prosperous without causing ourselves any grief. Proverbs 19 and verse 17, it says, whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord, and he will reward him for what they have done. So, our condition is to be kind to the poor. So being kind can, be, can take any form. You may be kind financially. You may be kind uh, in other ways, non-material. You may show affection and all that. But in the process of doing that, the Bible says that you are lending to God. And God is going to repay you for what you have done. Luke chapter 6 and verse 38, the Bible says, Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Again, it is about generosity. It is about giving. So as you give, the more you receive. You give, God feels. And he is not feeling the same measure uh, as you have given. Because he's saying that you, you, are, you will be running over and it will be poured onto your lap. Amen? And then we go to another very popular and sometimes controversial verse in Malachi 3, 10 and 12. It says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessings that you will not even have room for it. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops and uh, the vines in your fields will not drop their fruit uh, before it is ripe, says the Lord Almighty. And all the nations will call you blessed, for yours will be a delightful land. The Lord is challenging us to test him by simply bringing the whole tithe to the house. I know this is a topic that can be discussed. It's a whole topic by itself. I don't want to go to that. But I want us to just understand that by just meeting this condition of bringing the tithe, the whole tithe, to the storehouse, the Lord is going to open the windows of heaven 
it is a challenge he has thrown to us. I would urge us to throw the challenge back to God. Hallelujah. Finally, number five, it's about eternal life. In all our life, ultimately our desire is to live in eternal glory where there shall be a life free of our earthly troubles. When you look at the description of heaven that is recorded in uh, the Bible, I think more so in the book of Revelation, it is amazing. You know, the things you see there are not things you can figure out in your head and get them right. It is amazing. In fact, in chapter 21 of the Revelation, the Bible describes the new city, Jerusalem. I would urge you to go and read and try to understand those details. It is a magnificent city, and that is just the city in heaven. The Bible says that, you know, even the streets of heaven are paved with gold. And here we are fighting for gold, small pieces of gold, you know, something I can put in the pocket. In heaven, gold is what you step on. So when you look at that building, the new city, Jerusalem, you see the kind of you know, materials used to build the foundations. You'll be amazed. Those are not stones you see every other day. They are very, very rare gems. But that is what is forming the foundation, not even the wall. Entering heaven is subject to one living according to God's will, but most importantly, most importantly, having, accept, having accepted Christ as the Lord and the Savior. Let me look at uh, a few scriptures and then we'll be done. In the book of John, the Gospel of John, uh, chapter 3 and verse 3, the Bible says, Jesus replied, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Condition number one. To enter the kingdom of God, you have to be born again. Hallelujah. Then I go to the same chapter and I jump to verse number 16, which again is our commonplace verse. This one we say it even with our eyes closed. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Remember when we began, we talked about how do you get to believe. We already explained that. Now here it is being emphasized that, um, you know, having been born again, um, having been born again and accepting Jesus, who died for us, will guarantee us an eternal life. I go to, to the book of you know, Jude, and I look at verse 21, and the Bible says that, keep yourselves uh, in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. So we keep ourselves in God's love. A simple condition as we wait for the Lord's mercy. Hallelujah. Now, in conclusion, we are saying that uh, as the Bible says in the book of Psalms 37, verses 3 to 6, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your ways to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn. Uh, like, like the dawn. Your vindication like the noonday sun. Hallelujah. So, this day I want to challenge you even as I challenge myself to make every effort 
to meet the conditions that God has set. We have not even scratched the service by reading these five points. We are Bible readers, and I know we can go back and get everything uh, on, on our own. But as we know that God has attached, uh, you know, God has attached these conditions for a purpose. As we continue to endeavor to fulfill these conditions, he is a faithful God. And many can testify to this fact because many have received miracles. Many have received great things. Many have seen wonders that they never thought they would get. And we want to thank God because of his grace and his mercy. So my challenge, once again, the conditions have been laid out. There is nothing that we cannot do because we can do all things in Christ who strengthens us. And we have been given the ability to do exactly that. I challenge us. I challenge us, brothers and sisters. Let us meet the conditions God has set. And let us test him on that same conditions. He is the one who has set the condition. He is the one who has given the promise. Let us throw it back to him and let us wait for him to fulfill his promises. Thank you so much. May the Lord bless you. And I'm so, so grateful for this opportunity. May the Lord continue to bless you. Amen. Thank you. Yeah, we want to thank the Lord for the word that we have received today. The reality is that there are certain preconditions that we must meet before we get a business deal. There are certain preconditions that we must meet before we get any governmental appointment. And the truth in the physical is also true in the spiritual. There are certain preconditions that you and me must meet before we attract the blessing of the promises of God over our lives. We have been reminded today that if we are going to attract, we are going to attract God's forgiveness. There are certain preconditions that we must meet. We have been reminded today if we are going to attract longevity of life, there are certain preconditions that we must meet. We have been reminded today if we are going to attract good health, in fact, the Bible is clear that the sicknesses of Egypt will not find any dwelling place in our lives. That there are certain preconditions that we must meet. If we are going to attract prosperity, listen to me, the desire of God is that you and me might prosper. But God has laid down in scripture certain prerequisites so that you and me can be blessed of him. Last but not the least, we've been told that there are certain preconditions that we must meet if we are going to have an eternal life. I want you to understand that the desire of God is that we might prosper. The desire of God is that we might be healed. The desire of God is that we might experience eternal life. But the question is, are you willing to meet his conditions? It is not about God meeting your conditions. We have been reminded to us today, it's about us meeting God's conditions. My prayer for every one of us, even as we stay at the comfort of our homes, even as we view from wherever we are viewing, is that we will meet the conditions of God so that we can attract the promises of God over our lives. I want to pray for somebody today who is saying, yes, I want to meet the prerequisite conditions so that I can be forgiven of my sins. I want to meet the prerequisite conditions so that I might be healed in my body. I want to meet the prerequisite conditions so that I might attract longevity of life. Yes, the Bible says clear when we obey our parents, we attract longevity of life. The Bible is very clear when we shun evil, when we stay away from evil, yes, then we, we attract good health. When, when we shun evil, we eat right and exercise, then we attract good health. And I believe today God wants to do that for you.
You are there, you are saying, yes, I'm struggling in the area of prosperity. Yes, I am, I am living in debt. The Bible has clearly stated to us there are certain preconditions that when you and me meet, then we attract prosperity. One of those principles that was articulated here clearly is the principle of tithing. That is the only legal basis God has given to us that God might bless you. You might be struggling in the area of your finances. Debt seems to overwhelm you from the left, from the right, and in all directions. Yet God has given us a mechanism for prosperity. The Bible is very clear when we pay our tithes, God has, this, has declared in his word that he will open the windows of heaven and release a blessing. So prosperity is there for us as long as we meet God's requisite conditions. I want to believe uh, this very day that God wants to touch you. I want to believe this very day that God wants to release his promises over our lives. But the question I'm asking you today, are you willing to meet God's requisite conditions? I want to pray for you right now if you are not born again. I believe the greatest salvation that any man can ever receive is spiritual salvation. I want to pray for you. I want to pray that beginning today, you will be translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. I want to pray for you right now. Father, in Jesus' name, I want you to just pray uh, behind me. Say, Father, I come before you. I am, a, I am a sinner. I recognize that you came to die for a sinner like me. From today, I appropriate the precious blood of Jesus over my life. I will live for you all the days of my life. From today henceforth, I am your son. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You are there, you've been struggling in the areas of finances, wherever you are hearing me from, I want to challenge you beginning now. I want you to make a, make a promise to God. Make a promise to yourself that you will be a faithful tither in your local assembly. I want to pray for you right now. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for my hearers this very evening. Lord, as they meet God's requisite conditions, Lord, as they honor you with their substance, I pray that, Father, you will take away every form of debt in their lives. There will be a debt cancellation, and that, Father, you will open windows of heaven and pour forth a blessing where they will not contain it. Lord, I pray that many will marvel, even as the change of environment, even as the change in their resources, comes their way in answer to honoring God's word. So I bless them this very evening. The place of their defeat will be their place of victory. I release that grace right now in Jesus' name. We give you thanks. Amen. We want to encourage every one of you to visit with us on Sunday as we start off our first service at 9 a.m., which is the Kingdom Kids, and our second service, which is our English service, which will start at 9.30 a.m., and our third service, which will start at 11.15 a.m. Looking forward to joining with you in a time of celebration in the very presence of the Lord. We love you. We appreciate you. My name is Bishop Dr. Paul Habwe Kilioba, the senior pastor of Pefa Church Donholm. It is an honor and a privilege to minister to you tonight. Have a blessed evening. Amen. We welcome you to our three services in our virtual church. For the kids and those who are young at heart, we have Kingdom Kids starting at 9 a.m. all the way to 9.30 a.m. After that, we have our English service beginning at 9.45 a.m all the way to 11 a.m. And last but not least, our Swahili service, which begins at 11.15 a.m. all the way to 12.30 p.m. Please join us and let us be blessed. 
while we are at the comfort of our home. We would love to connect with you through our social media handles. Kindly like our Facebook page, which is Pepha Church Don Home. You can also follow us on Instagram at Pepha underscore Doni and also on Twitter at Pepha Doni. Kindly also subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is at Pepha Don Home Media. For any form of giving, you can use our M-Pesa Pay Bill number, which is 572078. For the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Should you need someone to stand with you in prayer, you can call or text the number 0703 430 726.